All right. Hello and welcome to the channel. X this out. Today we're going to be looking at the astrological events of 2002. So as I was creating this, I realized there is a lot, a lot more that I need to put together in this slide. Um, I actually only got a short way through everything that needs to go in here. So this is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be three parts and I'm going to work on it. Um, I want to have it done before the 30th. Well, that's like in two days. So heaven help me. Um, I want to be able to sit down all together and like definitely have your calendars out today. Um, the vision that I have is like putting things into your calendar. What I would like to do is to be able to um, also like list planets. So this is super challenging for me because as you got, all, all of you here know, I read the chart in the moment. Everything that I've ever read to you guys or you, you all, whatever, um, has been... The, the chart for right now. And looking ahead is super disembodied for me because it's it's like it's hard to connect with the energy of the future. Um, so what I would like to do today is go through and, and share with you what I've gathered so far, which I believe is going to take us up until actually it's not even by months so far I just have it by the inner planets the planets that are closest to us and some of the main events that you've probably been hearing about on uh, in the media uh, about the United States Pluto uh, return and about some of the things that are like popular and everybody's talking about them and then I'm going into the inner planets and the major themes that are going to be happening and then what i want to do is go into um month by month so i'm not at the month by month part yet what we're going to do today is get a, a break uh let's just start so everything i want to see if i can figure out how to turn the page one of nine okay so what this is, USA Pluto return date. So this is the, really something that we've all been hearing about and seeing in the media. I wonder if I could, oh, what the fuck just happened? I wonder if I could edit this as I go, but I guess I can't. Um, we've all been seeing this about the Pluto return and I just wanna, I keep having to go and be like, what are the dates again? So. You might want to write this down. I will share this slideshow with you so you can go back over the course of the year and reference it. Um, because for me personally, there's there's like certain things that like last year, it was the Uranus Saturn square that I had to keep on looking it up. Like, oh, what are those dates again? What are those dates again? And it just makes sense <clears throat> to chart it all out in advance. We'll all have it here in this uh, <clears throat> PowerPoint presentation, and I'll keep it more or less like in this first part, the first nine slides, it's going through um, the inner planets and the USA's thing, which like USA centric. Like, I don't I don't think that what happens in the United States is important to all the other countries because i have lived in other countries before and i don't i know that it's not true but for some reason people in the u.s are like very united states centric and think that what happens here really impacts the rest of the world and maybe it does to some degree um but we will look at a couple of things from the the chart of the united states just because there's two things um, and then as we go on, I think part two is going to go month by month. So we'll have 
starting in January, and then we'll go through month by month. And then in the the part three, we want to do is us go through the important things again, but with our journal. And I'm seeing if I can get one of my friends who's a musician to come and like play music so we can just take time connecting in with the planets um, and have more of an embodied experience because it's so much in advance. We're looking at the whole year in advance. I feel like it would be helpful to be able to tune in deeply to those planets, the section of your chart, which those transits are happening and just have a minute to, um, you know, like with that Uranus and Saturn square that we had so impactful in 2021, to look at the houses that that, that transition is making, have a moment to sort of tune in to the planets and to our own soul and listen for guidance so we can write those things down. So that's going to be the part three. And hopefully the part three will be ready before the first. So I want to have it done by the 30th, but I would like to be, I took uh, the first off. I blocked my calendar. So we'd have any time of the day to get back together and go through little by little, finding out where these transits are, how it's impacting our own personal charts, and then taking some time to like, as you're putting things in your calendar, knowing, let's say, want to be able to plan our year in some way, having a, a bigger, broader view on what is potentially going to be coming up and how we can potentially be empowered, like have tools to work with that. So starting here with the Pluto return dates, as you can see, the first hit highlights the topics that are going to be up for us. We already know because with this Pluto return, it is a slower process. And I feel like all of 2020, all of 2021, people have been talking about the U.S.'s Pluto return since 2012, for sure. Like whenever I first got really... Um, uh, more dialed in, I guess I could say, into astrology. The astrologers were already talking about this, this USA Pluto return. So we already can, 2020 and 2021 really brought out the shadows. Uh, and for me, shadow basically means things that... Hmm... It's, it's more than just things that we don't like. It's things that we don't even realize because when the topic comes up, we'll try to hide. We'll try to um, turn it around and point at somebody else. So one of the things that's coming up a lot is the idea of a superior race. And because of our culture, our country being built by use of um, taking over land that wasn't for the taking and the things with uh, the indigenous people being there, you know, what they had being destroyed and taken and enslavement of people. All of these things are coming up and it's not that we don't like it about ourselves, um, the term white fragility, it's like extends beyond whiteness and into just fragility of like where, you know, the, I'm not going to get into the topic because it's not what I want to talk about. But what I'm trying to say is that the shadow isn't just what we are uncomfortable with. It's the ways that we try, we, like we twist ourselves up into uncomfortable shapes to hold information or to hold emotions which are which is patterns of information in weird ways in our bodies and so when that stuff starts to come out and surface it also as it's coming out it liberates energy 
space for many things, but it's also like really uncomfortable. People have um, emotional responses to these topics of whatever the shadow may be. And with this Pluto return, it, it, there's topics that we've seen which have to do with um, our relationships, our prejudged concepts of certain people, um, <clears throat> all of these issues of what's the word when my friends were giving me back sage and saying they can't burn sage because they're not indigenous. Um, I forget the word. This it was like really popular. It's like a appropriation, cultural appropriation. Um, all of this stuff that like, really, it's like getting dug up and we're like questioning ourselves and questioning other people. And um, it's on a larger scale. And so that's not all. For this first hit, we know that the Pluto is in the second house of the, the chart for the USA. So second house having to do with what we consider to be comfort and pleasure and our own home, our own comfort in our bodies, our comfort in our home. Um, it has to do with resources, how we resource ourselves from source. So are we in an intimate relationship with the source that we are resourcing ourselves from, or do we feel entitled to just keep take, take, taking without doing any work in return? Like in indigenous cultures, you wouldn't just go and pick the medicine or pull the water out or take the minerals and the gold and all. You wouldn't just grab that out. There would be a an exchange happening where you're working to replant the medicine, you're only taking certain parts, and there's all these things that we, um, it's just a, a question, like, are you, are you actually resourcing yourself from source in a way that is sustainable and in harmony with others and in harmony with the earth? So that's coming up on a large scale. Um, today, when I was looking at some of the metaverse stuff, I was like, okay, so basically, we're going to be it locked in our rooms doing uh, some internet things or virtual reality things while the earth actually is just going to be deteriorating. And like, we're not out there engaging anymore. Now we're just in our rooms going to concerts and stuff from our bedroom with our virtual reality headset on. And our kids are hungry and our, you know, it's, it's like these topics are coming up during the Pluto return because it's like, we need to figure this out. And it's an individual thing, like we individually need to figure it out. But we are also watching on the, the, unfortunately, watching on the TV, we're watching on media, we don't really know what's really happening. Like we really only know what we, we see something, we read something. And in the back of my mind, I'm always like, okay, well, this is the cover story. And I know that I don't really know what's going on. But I do know with from this astrology piece, I do know that this Pluto return, the first hit is going to highlight what topics we are going to be working on. And this will impact us individually, mostly because of like our own individual relationship with the earth. Um, and what I'm seeing is like, we need to figure out a way. And I don't think we need to figure it out. I think the way is already there. The way is already there. And we just need to, by, by negate, um, negate, by negation, seeing, okay, well, in Tantra yoga, they call neti neti. Well, not this, not that. So I know I don't want this. I know I don't want that. So by deduction, I think that's called like reasonable deduction or something like that, that you're like, okay, know that. Okay, no to this, no to that. And then so there's something left. So we don't need to figure out the way the way is already there. It's just that this first Pluto hit is going to really help us to see what we're working with. 
And so by negation, because Pluto works through destruction, um, through death, a death of a thing, sometimes is of actual death. Like um, from the research that I've done, I'm sorry, I didn't grab the, the research. This is really what kind of keeps me at a level of like not being that awesome. Um, it's boring to me, but I, from the research that I did read, there actually have been deaths during the Pluto return of a nation, that there are physical deaths of the president or the king or the dictator of that that nation during a Pluto return. So we could be seeing some of that, just keeping that in mind. Um, and then what is that going to do to the second house issues of security, uh, food security, all the security of like our homes and our all these things that we have, we thought would never change. Things that we thought would always be there to sustain us. Those, like with the death of, it could just be the death of one person or one, like the collapse of the banks. That's just a one entity that will do a, what is domino effect to many other entities. How is that going to affect you personally in your home? So, and I'm not saying I think that's going to happen, but a little bit I do in, in the back of my mind. I don't know though, because see, the thing is like, we all have a, a slice of the insights into the possibilities, but we won't know until the moment. And with Pluto, it's not sometimes though, I was gonna say it's not the day of, but during my Pluto initiation, the, the day of the first hit, the day of the second hit, and the day of the third hit, there was life-changing information for me. I mean, really like very serious life-changing information for me on the on the actual days. So with this chart for the nation, I don't know that we're going to get that news or hear those things. I do know that the exact day of the first hit in 2020 of Saturn and Pluto, I don't remember what, what day that was. It was. I think it was a date, January 19th, possibly 2020, whatever that date was, that was the exact date that we got news from China about the coronavirus and about what the, the makeup of that virus was. So we might, you know, the, the, um, the powers that be or those who are in power or however you call it to start with they were they were freemasons so when they developed the constitution everything was done by astrology that's not a myth or a conspiracy theory that is a truth like they are do i i mean they were doing that for sure and it's my feeling i don't have hard evidence other than the fact that like stuff does happen on the exact day. Like I will read the astrology of the day and I'll be like, oh, blah, 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 whatever the thing is. And something related to that does happen on that day. So, and I think it is set up that way. I, I do have, uh, I wouldn't call it a belief, but I have a theory <clears throat> that that is happening. So on February 20th, <clears throat> the first hit of the Pluto return. The second hit is July 11th, 2022. The second hit, I this is the way I say it. Um, I haven't, I didn't read this anywhere, but it's what it seems like to me. And that's just from my own Pluto initiation and from what uh, kind of going along with the Saturn, what the Saturn hits are. The second hit, what I called it as checking up on how we are remediating the issues that came up on the first hit. So the second hit usually will be like digging us, digging us a little bit deeper into um, whatever topics come up on February 20th. This second hit is going to be like an excavation of like, okay, and you have these tools. So it's like kind of going a layer deeper into how are you remediating the issue? 
So whatever we find out between February 20th and July 11th, this is like, okay, now this, like, you know, we're hopefully between February 20th and July 11th, we do start to figure out ways to work with, if you haven't already started investing in some kind of a cryptocurrency, definitely start doing that now. Um, and I think as soon as the the transition from Aquarius into Pisces that Jupiter is making tonight, that's around 9.30 something tonight, as soon as that stabilizes, um, because usually the first day of a transition of a planet from a sign to another sign does create some instability. Um, you'll have a better idea. It, I know it can be daunting because there's like thousands of different cryptocurrencies to look into. I have no, I have nothing to say to you about which one to get. I really don't. Um, to me, it's always a good day to buy Bitcoin. Um, and there's a lot of other people who have a lot of different things they say about that. Um, for me, the bottom line is that Bitcoin is the national currency of El Salvador, of Guatemala. Um, there's a lot of countries that are making it a national currency. It's not going away. So that is important to me personally, whereas some of these other ones you don't know. Some of them are memes. They're just a joke and it's hard to know. So do your own research. There's classes that you can take. Um, I do know a person who I follow, who I trust a lot, who seems to always be right. And he's not like a, like a Bitcoin nationalist like I am. <laughs> so, he, you know, you can learn more um ways to diversify in that why am i mentioning this well because of the fact that the that this pluto return is happening in the second house of the united states chart there will be something huge happening it already is happening uh, fiat currency seems to be being um how do you call this when you're uh, phased out so gold, silver, um, you know, do your own research on that. I, I'm, do, I'm doing that myself, but I'm not, I think it's ridiculous for anybody who's not making it their whole entire life study to give any kind of, make any comments or suggestions because we really don't know. So you got to, you got to do your own research on that. Okay. And then the third hit. This is going to be on December 28th, and this gives us insight into what our follow-up work will be. So this isn't like now it's over, by no means. By the time we get to December 28th, our whole world is going to be completely upside down, especially if you, I mean, mostly if you live in the U.S. If you don't live in the U.S., I personally don't think your world is going to be upside down because it's it's the this is the united states chart like does our second house security finances um our food scarcity or food like does that really impact you it might if, if you think it does then maybe it does and i just am not aware of that i just know that when i lived in other countries None of this stuff mattered to me. It didn't make one bit of difference. Even we had an election when I didn't live in the U.S. Uh, that was when President Obama got elected and I was in India. It didn't make a, nothing changed in my day-to-day -day life in India. So for us, though, living in the United States, everything will be turned upside down. By the time we get to December 28th, we will have more clarity on what are the exact things. Um, but by the 28th, we will know what our follow-up work me will be means that I don't have I really have no idea that that third hit hopefully brings us more clarity with Pluto the main purpose is to liberate displaced energy and to empower it's it's for um, whatever like the thing that I keep going back to for myself is like what am I consenting to when I put my money at the bank 
by signing my name. This is a petition. It's basically a spell that I am participating in. Every time I sign my name on a check, every time I make a deposit. So I am consenting to whatever the bank is doing with my energy that I am turning into them in the form of uh, a signature saying that this much, th this many, you can say meters or miles or whatever unit of measurement you can think of. This amount of my energy I am giving to you until I want to ask for it back. I'm giving that to you and you can do whatever you want with those units of my energy. So looking at all those ways we are consenting to things, like if you use uh, a government funded health insurance plan, what are you consenting to with that? If you're using food stamps, what are you consenting to with that? Because as 2022 happens, I feel like there are going to be ways that they're able to say, hey, so you either need to do X, Y, and Z, or we're pushing the button to stop whatever, your food stamps, or to stop your, this, uh, I heard somebody talking about, oh, I heard we're going to be getting a $3,000 check every month in 2022 when we have these new lockdowns happening and we have these new... So if you decide to get that, what are you consenting to in order to get that? So this is all just Pluto topics. It's, oh, let's see. Oh no, my screen still shows the main screen and I can see the search option to the right. I'm not sure if it's just mine. It's not just you. I was about to ask the same. Oh man, okay. Let's see what I can do about that. I'm going to stop share. And then I'm going to share again. All right. Do you guys see that? Yes, now I can. Okay. Well, I'm about to change the, the slide. So tell me if you can see the new one. I think I am. Do you see this? It just changed. Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. It's good to hear your voice. Um, so the USA Neptune opposition. This is the next thing that uh, I feel like is the next important thing. There's a bunch of Mars things for the US chart that I'm probably not going to get into because there's a lot with Mars. Maybe what I'll do um, is just give us a brief, not, not now because I don't have a slide for that yet. I'm really feeling the slideshow. There's a lot with Mars coming up in the US chart and especially in relation with Neptune. So <clears throat> 18 February, 2022. The U, uh, so Neptune in the sky, I believe it is 22 degrees of Pisces, is going to be at an opposition with Neptune in the USA's chart. And the thing that was like overwhelmingly every article that I read, and I've attached an article here, this is from one of my teachers. Uh, Daniel uh, D. Jamario. Daniel Jamario. I think that's how he pronounces it. Um, this is an article that he wrote. But everything that I read was pointing to the last time Neptune was at 20, 22 degrees of Pisces in opposition to the Neptune on USA's chart. It was this world war, whatever, I don't know if it's one or two, um, the Great Depression, uh, some other civil war thing. I don't remember which civil war it was. Um, so that was my overall takeaway was like, huh, okay, so I don't feel war with like the army and stuff. I feel like another kind of war with our mind. And with uh, the way 
that they can change an algorithm. So like people who I used to see all the time on my feed, I never see them anymore. And there's all these new people, which is like a very, you know, it's like a covert way of changing me in a way. So like new information is coming in and old information is, I don't see it anymore. So they can, that's one thing that I read also that was like, hmm, maybe like, what could this mean? So that's going to be something interesting. I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, I changed the slide now. Hopefully you can see that. This is interesting. So Uranus Saturn, we had in 2021, this was one of the main things that we could not get away from. It was one of the most talked about things. I thought about it pretty much every single day because of where these were on my chart. It was in my first and my 10th. So um, Uranus being in Taurus is a really big deal. And then having it be in a 90 degree angle with Saturn, who was in Aquarius really big deal. Um, and then so wherever that was on your chart, that 90 degree angle, radical changes have been taking place. And all of 2021, I thought, okay, here's the date, 17 February, 14 June, 24 December. And I knew 24 December isn't the end, just like 17 February isn't the beginning. This is just the exact hits, but the energy it's like a window that opens slowly. So the window has been open before 17 February. And then at 24 December, the window starts to close, but it, it's, it's fully open at 24. This is like the, the maximum exactness. And then it starts to close, but we're still going to be feeling it. Well, upon investigation, we will be feeling it pretty much all of 2022 because that angle as it's closing, it opens right back up again. And we have another exact hit on 24 October, 2022. So it, it starts, so what I wrote here, just when you thought it was over, you realize the 90 degree angle is impacting all of 2022 and makes a fourth almost exact between the 17th of September and the 24th of October. So the almost means that it's, uh, the degree point is the same, but it doesn't reach the minute point to the exact. But so say, I, I don't remember the exact degree, but I want to say it's like 22 or something like that. Like Saturn is at 22 of Aquarius and Uranus is at 22 of Taurus. It might not be, it might be 18. It's, it's somewhere around there. I don't know why I didn't get that exact date. I was in a rush, I guess. I'll fix it. It'll be on here later. Um, so it say it's at 22 degrees and 40 seconds for one of them and 22 degrees and 50 seconds for the other one. So it is, it's pretty much exact, but not quite, but pretty much. So we're, what this basically is telling us is that all of these radical changes to our structure, to um, this like innovative infrastructure that Saturn has been creating in Aquarius and the ground shaking of Uranus and Taurus breaking up anything that's stagnant in the way that we use the gems and minerals of the earth, the way that we just even are intimate with the earth, that we, the way that we stand on the earth, like the very ground that we stand upon has been rumbling and shaking all of 2021. And then for 2022, we still feel it. And then it's the, it makes that fourth pretty much exact hit on the 24th of October, 2022. So it's kind of like, almost like a completion of whatever it is that we've been experiencing. So what I want, we'll, we'll do this more in depth on January 1st, whoever's down to come. It's probably going to take about two hours for us to get through all the material. We'll have a break in between. But what I want to do, just start to do this now. Start to tune into this now. This is a big one. Then when we meet on the first, we'll tune into it more deeply and I'll give time 
um, hopefully have some music like live music for us to sit and journal on these things. But just right now, start to think back to what was up in your life in relation, like what you saw happening in the world and what was happening in your own reality on 17th of February. And then again, what was going on for you around the 14th of June? And then now this one's easy. What's going on for you now is at 24 December, what has been feeling so new and also destabilized? There's a destabilizing and something new that you're thinking about and questioning for your, your own basic structure, for the ground that you stand on. Because then when we get to the 24th of October, there will be some like, oh, this is what all that was for, okay? I thought that was going to happen on the 24th of December. That was like, oh, by the 24th of December, I'll know what all this is for. I'm probably going to already have bought the property and moved on to it. That's what I thought. That, that did not happen. So possibly by the 24th of October, 2022, there is this completion like, oh, that's what all those things were for. And hopefully by this date, there is some, uh, because what a 90 degree does, it, it causes inflammation and irritation of these two things. So Saturn wants to innovate just because it's an Aquarius. By uh, archetype, Saturn does not want to innovate. Saturn wants things to stay very expectable, very traditional and like every day at nine, I do this every day. It, like Saturn wants that consistency. Saturn in Aquarius wants consistency that is fresh and new and innovative. But because it's Saturn, it doesn't want to be on Metaverse. Like it does want to have, there. Saturn is the most dense of the planet. It, it has to do with that most grounded. It, it's our bones. So Saturn wants to be, like pancake down to the earth. It's that like when you're in a, a yoga posture with your hips open, it's like your hips wanting to be totally sunk in to the earth. Saturn wants innovation while being completely grounded bones to the stones, like grounded down to the earth. And then Uranus in Taurus wants freedom and flexibility and ability to uh, maneuver through the changing utilization of resources. So what this kind of looks like is like today I give you a one ounce silver coin to pay you for something and tomorrow maybe you're going to pay me with a, a gram of Moldavite for some, you know what I mean? Like that to me, because Taurus is earth in the form of gems and minerals. Taurus is the beauty and the pleasure and the abundance of earth. So Uranus in Taurus wants us free and flexible within that paradigm of the gems, the minerals. Um, and it's not just about trading. It's also about pleasure and luxury. So Today, I maybe I stayed in bed and cuddled until 10 and then got up and started working. And then I went and did a bodywork session and maybe she paid me in dinner for the next week. She prepared dinner and I brought it home. So now dinner's in the fridge and we can, you know what I mean? And, um, so what I'm saying is I'm not, it's not just like, oh, we're going to go to a bartering system. Not necessarily. Saturn, uh, Uranus in Taurus has flexibility with the way we utilize resources and the way that we resource ourselves with source. So it has to do with intimacy, our relationship with earth, our relationships in general, because Taurus is about uh, sense-related relationships, sense-based relationships. So that does have a lot to do with our peer-to-peer uh, -peer things. Um, rest and relaxation is a priority also for Taurus. When Uranus is there, 
this is what it looks like. It's like I'm seeing the clock and it's like, oh, today at midnight, I was working on my book. But tomorrow and then tomorrow at I slept in till 10. So then I had to do my morning puja at 11. When, but the puja was already at 10. So it's like our clock becomes Uranian. Our body clock becomes Uranian. Now, I could just be saying this because I've been hanging out with somebody who's a narcoleptic and his schedule for sleep is, it's like this. And it, so it's getting me into a different pattern, but it is totally Uranus in, uh, Uranus in Taurus. So I feel like this, like it, that we become, because mm, there's this other part too about our careers and our jobs. If you have not yet began to work in a field, no, that's not it. It's not a field. It's if you have not yet begun to work with your goddess given talents and skills, you have to now <laughs> because this, this, um, 90 degree angle to me it looks like this you you may be needing to work at midnight and you definitely need to rest your nervous system because uranus in taurus is a, an earthquake it's a constant earthquake that we're going to be experiencing for a while like even after this 90 degree angle is done uranus is still going to be in taurus Oh, and I don't know if we're going to get to this today because I'm talking way more than I thought I would. Um, but the nodal axis is shifting on. I did make a slide for that. Oh, my God, you guys. There's so much in here. On the 19th of January, 2020, the nodal axis shifts into Taurus and Scorpio on the 19th. So what ends up happening is we have... Uh, what month was that? I want to say it was in June of 2022. Yes, I think it's June. I want to say the 24th or the 25th. I'm not, I don't remember off the top of my head, but we do have the North Node conjunct Uranus. That is going to be pure madness. I mean, so the North Node is like whatever it's near, it really amplifies it. So if the North and and Uranus is an amplify, it's an amplification and energy, regardless of where it's at or who's next to it or what the alignments are. Just by nature, Uranus is um, who is Uranus? Pro, is Uranus Prometheus? Um, it's it's electrical currents of energy. It's like raw potential energy. So when you bring North Node and Uranus to a conjunction, and as you know, this is since Uranus moves like microscopically over the course of many years, the North Node, it takes 18 months to go through a sign. It's, it's going to be around the area of Uranus for a lot of the year. And then that exact date, I think it's sometime in June, so this is a lot of nervous energy, a lot of nervous system is like, that's what's highlighting to me for my, for making medicine. Everything I've been making has to do with calming the nervous system, getting us back into a state of being fully in our body. All, I mean, there's so many of the tinctures that I, I have three tinctures now dedicated just to sleep and dreams. Um, the latest one, I got to get that out to you guys. I haven't even made any anything. I've been using it every single night and it is, it is really something. It's really something. Um, but this is what is needed for this year. We need to calm our nervous system. So this rest and relaxation has got to be put into your daily schedule, which you're going to need to work around your need for sleep. You're going to need to work around your need to rest your nervous system. No more coffee, no more energy drinks, because that was part of the old way, which was work first and then rearrange your life around your job. 
we're not doing that anymore. Um, hopefully we're not. I really, really hope that if <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, I do have a book about life purpose and destiny um, that I can give to anybody who feels like I just don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know that is for a lot of people who are stuck in jobs that they're not they're not serving their life purpose and they know that. Um, it's really important now more than ever to get clear. The reason I'm saying this, let me finish the sentence, to get clear on who you are, what it is that your service, what, what is your service to humanity? What is your 10th house intention or your mid heaven intention rather? that we all have some something that we want to do to serve need to find that out because 2022 seems to be um a chill year in comparison to what we've just gone through and 2020 was a crazy astrological year 2021 probably even a little bit more crazy in the sense of just a lot of wild turbulence 2022 seems fairly manageable. It seems fairly man. There is going to be a lot of uh, changes with our government and changes with our basic systems for the U.S. especially. But beyond 2022, and I'm not trying to be like fear tactic at all, but 2023, 2024, and 2025 have like after 2025, nothing will be the same. Nothing. They're all very, and if you're looking into astrology at all, you probably have, you're not just hearing this from me. You'll hear it. You're going to, you'll hear it from more people. Um, so this year, it is of the highest importance that you find out what is your inner treasure what is your inner treasure and how can you make that be the way that you resource yourself? While giving time for yourself to rest and relax. Okay, so I think we're going to end there um, and we'll, we'll pick up here with Jupiter Jupiter is beautiful this year. There's a lot of really beautiful, um, big, high, inspirational, all the love and light people are going to be in heaven this year because Jupiter really, Jupiter in Pisces is, is really uplifting us spiritually. So if you have something that you feel called to do in the realm of spirituality this year, Oh, there's another thing I didn't get in here. I want to tell you this right now, though. Uh, again, let me finish my sentence. This is the year to put that into motion. If you have something in you in the realm of spirituality, I saw friend Megan come on here and I was remembering about her giving yoga nidra. Maybe in the past, you didn't see that being something that could be very profitable, but this, uh, with Jupiter in Pisces, Yoga Nidra, I mean, if you can teach a course on it, or if you can, you know, somehow focusing on those things that are spiritual gifts, because a lot of people are starving. We have been in a spiritual, what's that called when you're starving? Like a famine or something like that for a long time. And with, with Jupiter entering Pisces, it is a time to really feed on that and like to really bring that back. And so people don't have tools. They don't know how to make altars. They don't know how to pray because we got so far away from church. When I'm not saying church was the right way to pray, but through dance, through movement, not just yoga with like some cool hip hop music on the background, nothing wrong with that either. But like praying with your body, praying through dance and prayer and all that stuff. Like we, we're, it didn't seem like a way to make money before. And I'm not saying to like profit off of spirituality. I'm not saying that at all. But if you have a gift 
in the spirituality realm, the normal people, the mainstream people really, really want it. They really need it and they really want it. Oh, Megan, I love you. <sighs> okay, so what I wanted to tell you is uh, this last little this last little bit, which is that there's a there's a phase where all planets are direct. And I definitely want you to put that in your calendar because this is going to be the time where it's like, if you have something that you want to start, say, you know, what I'm planning to do, I have two books in me that I haven't started working on. Um, I have a couple of different ideas that I, that I've been like, oh, that would be good, but I haven't done it yet. So between now and let me give you the exact date. Let's see. Jupiter, uh, Venus. God, did I delete it? Oh my goodness. Jupiter. I must have deleted it. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, so May 3rd through May 9th, all planets are direct. So between now and February 3rd, please complete something that you can share. If you have a three-part series on Yoga Nidra that you can share for the average person, you don't have to train a teacher. You just need to make something that, that somebody can use. Um, if you have, uh, there's a lot about finance. Like we, we were talking about this yesterday. Like some of us, grew up never there was no conversations about going to college or nobody owned a property nobody that we knew owned anything we were on food stamps we were living like really not well financially a lot of us don't have basic skills on finances so if if you have an expertise you can put together a little three-part series on the basic fundamentals of finance for normal people, you know, um, put something together. And I feel like maybe we should have like a little workshop on this. Like how do you build a little three-part series course? Or um, maybe if you have something, present it to me and, and Mystic and we can host you on our Teachable platform possibly. Um, I'm not making any promises. I don't know. I haven't talked to her about that. But um, we want we want to help, and this is something that's necessary. So, just to start working on what is your thing that is shareable. Everybody has one, even if it's like putting together outfits or making altar cloths or teaching people how to pray, teaching people how to set up an altar, like how to make an offering, like these things that we we aren't taught or we went away from because we didn't like the church or whatever. And so I think you get what I'm saying. February 3rd to May 9th, all planets are direct. So whatever you start working on between now and February 3rd, you do have enough time. You could sit down four hours one day, four hours the next day and have something legit put together to share. You wanna launch it between uh, those dates between February and May, because all planets are direct, it like swoops up your project in the winds of that forward progressive movement of all planets direct. And it's very, very auspicious for whatever you get, whatever you start, whatever you release out into the winds of the, the world. Um, so you just want to make sure you're thinking about that in advance. This makes me so excited. I'm so excited too. And we need to get together and put something together. That's the other thing. Um, yeah, Erica already approved this message, but we are going to teach something together like a like co-host on the channel. Um, me and Megan have done that. Uh, and if you have something, bring it up because we can definitely co-host on the channel. There's not 
a payment necessarily for a co-host, but what you can do um, when you co-host is like practice presenting something um, and then have it be like a, a way to advertise whatever it is that you do. Okay, does anybody want to say anything? I can stop the recording or I can leave it on, whatever, whatever you guys want. But if you have anything that you want to ask or have any comments or feedback. We have a lot more to cover. So let's cover this, um, I think on the 30th and then on the 1st, we'll get together We'll pick a time that everybody can do so we can get together and do um, an actual, like, very intentional connecting with the planets and um, getting some real insight into what the planets are telling us specifically. And maybe that would be something, um, gosh, I, I took a yoga nidra course, but I didn't really pay attention. I didn't, I don't even think I finished it. But I feel like during something like this, it's really nice to have some of those tools to like get into that meditative state, connect in with the planets, ask for guidance, and we'll just write down what whatever comes through. So I'm actually going to end this now, and I'm going to go sit back down and finish working on this slideshow that I'm making. And um, I want to have something back ready for you again in two more days. So. Thank you all so much for being here. And I look forward to connecting with you all again soon.